Mr. Pulley back with lecture two for the Roman Empire. Uh, quick and dirty, this is going to take about six minutes or so and cover the other 11 questions you need for the study guide as well as some other information trying to tie the whole thing together. Uh, I left you with the Roman Empire at its largest and fullest extent here where we refer to the Mediterranean as the Roman Lake. Uh, this expansion is by Augustus and Hadrian and, and other emperors. Uh, left it at this size. I left you literally with uh, Hadrian building his wall across here to make things uh, not so, you know, safe or actually safer from the Scots, those crazy barbarians. Um, realize this is a, an empire of a tremendous amount of trade. And what we're looking at here is going to be coming up in this video is going to be the changes and troubles, uh, changes to the culture in terms of religion, especially with the rise of Christianity and other issues that lead to basically the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, as you can see here, there's a tremendous amount of trade going on here in the Roman world. Again, what we're looking at is when these Germanic tribes start invading into the Roman Empire and taking over uh, losses really throughout the western part of the empire and eventually the fall of the western Roman Empire. So first thing we will look at is the uh, rise of Christianity and the effect that's going to have on Roman culture. Uh, Christianity is one of many religions that existed at the time of the Roman Empire. Uh, it just, happen, it just happens to be the one that has staying power, so to speak, because it's still around today. Now, Christianity had been just one other small little sect out there that didn't, you know, annoy the Romans too much. Uh, but it changes radically when Paul, a uh, Roman Jew, uh, comes into contact with it and decides to spread Christ's teachings beyond the Jews to others, non-Jews. Okay? He adds in because he's now got a different audience that doesn't have the same background that Jewish people have in terms of traditions and religious beliefs. He adds in ideas from Plato and the Stoics from ancient Greeks. And in doing so, he helps attract educated people and as their numbers grow, then the Romans start taking notice. And then next thing you know, you're being persecuted because you won't, uh, in their case, refuse to honor the emperor as a god. Yes, there's persecution, but generally it's not as bad as you think. Are some people fed to the lions? Yes, but lions are expensive. Can't do that all the time. Uh, mostly some uh, persecution more in the forms of crucifixions like we ended up doing to Christ. Okay? But for the most part... There is some, not saying that persecution is not bad, but it's not nearly as bad as stories about, you know, everyone being thrown to the lions. I okay. uh, also want to know that an early Roman bishop is called a papa. Uh, that's actually not in your text, uh, but we talked about that a little bit in class and the idea between that and a papa and a potato in Spanish, and uh, you, we've got it now, right? Okay, so early Roman bishops are called that. They're also, uh, as it grows and, and eventually becomes an accepted religion in the empire, and eventually as we'll see the religion of the empire, there will be some famous Roman uh, Christian scholars. Among them is Augustine, uh, from whom we get uh, Augustana College. Keeping going here with the rise of Christianity, realize that when Jesus comes along, uh, he is called Christos. This is Greek word for uh, Messiah. Uh, the writings of the early Christians are compiled into the New Testament. Now, I realize this isn't done literally until hundreds of years after Christ's death, um, death uh, and the death of all the folks who wrote those things. So uh, they've been edited and revised and things several times before they are actually compiled into the New Testament and the Bible, the Bible being the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, the New Testament being the parts of the Bible that existed uh, for the Jews prior to Christianity. Um, eventually it becomes accepted and in fact one of our Roman emperors, uh, a guy by the name of Constantine, actually becomes a Christian just before his death. Uh, legend has it that uh, in going into a battle he was worried and he prayed to the gods and he saw in the sky uh, the shape of a cross and so he had all his soldiers paint that on their uh, shields. They go in and win the battle and he's so thankful for that that afterwards he becomes a Christian. And not only has he become a Christian, he's now, as a Christian, going to protect Christian beliefs. And that starts in 313. At this point, there has been, you know, persecution has been falling off. Well, at this point now, there's no more persecution. Constantine also is a guy who builds Constantinople. Uh, this is at the uh, place that we refer to as Byzantium. We'll see it as Byzantium uh, becoming Constantinople. Back to Byzantium when we see the Byzantine Empire. 
Uh, what's really interesting here is he will rule from here, and so Rome has a new capital, not Rome. That seems a little odd. The capital of the Roman Empire is now Constantinople. Okay. Later on, uh, Theodosius, uh, another Christian emperor, will actually make Christianity the official religion. So in a very short time, it seems in the book, if you're reading through that, it says, wow, they went from being persecuted to the official religion. Well, realize that's literally over, you know, we're talking about here, 313 when Constantine, Theodosius doing this um, around 340s, I can't remember off the top of my head. Literally, we're talking about 300 plus years for that change to happen. Okay, again, looking on with our Roman Empire, because of the problems in the empire, we're going to have to make some changes to try to address some issues. It's not just uh, the Christians and the changes they're bringing about. It's other issues in terms of uh, the economy and things falling apart. We're being invaded by people. And as a result of that, we've got problems, uh, pressures. Uh, Diocletian actually divides the empire. And not only does he divide the empire, he's actually going to rule over from here in Constantinople uh, so he's actually maintained the eastern part of the empire as opposed to the western part of the empire. Uh, and that is going to actually suffer some great troubles. Uh, in terms of dealing with economic crises, he's going to issue uh, the Edict of Prices. And this is going to help try to control inflation. Well, it not only controls inflation uh, by trying to freeze prices so they can't go up, uh, it's also going to require you to stay in whatever job you're in. And not only that, the job becomes hereditary. So if you're a teacher like me, then my children would become teachers also. Sorry, girls. Okay. So the folks who do invade, we have the uh, Visigoths, the Goths, the Huns, Attila the Hun. Uh, terrible time period. The Visigoths are the... Uh, um, Western Goths, the uh, Ostrogoths from the east, uh, all kinds of Goths. These are dramatic tribes coming in from uh, this region up in here. Uh, they are actually being pressed by the Huns, led by a guy named Attila. Uh, they're coming in from Central Asia in this area. They actually push some dramatic tribes in, and the dramatic tribes actually come knocking on the door, say, let us in, these terrible folks are attacking us. And we let them in, and uh, Lord, can you believe it? They don't want to leave when the trouble is over. Uh, we'll actually hire these guys to become part of the army, and pretty soon we have barbarians at the gate and barbarians guarding the gate, so to speak. Uh, Germans uh, in the army uh, defending against German invaders. Think about how that's going to work out. Okay. Eventually, we have sort of this divided empire, and a German is placed in charge, and he will eventually, uh, Odoacer in 476 in September, will declare himself to be the king of Rome. And that's the point, from that point on, some scholars say that's the end of the Roman Empire, because at that point, no more Roman emperors. Well, unless you count the ones over in the eastern part. Okay. That will later on become the Byzantine Empire. Uh, I've got another map here for you because this is showing in the red. This would then be what becomes the Byzantine Empire. And as you can see, at the time of this fall, literally by 476, Rome in the west has lost much of its territory, much of what was in Carthage, uh, Corsica, Sardinia, uh, big chunks of Gaul, which is today France and, and all of uh, Spain. So big problems had already been going on in the west for a while. Okay, that's where I'm going to leave you guys for now. I'm going to come back later with a little bit uh, looking at architecture and some new inventions of the uh, Romans, art a little bit, and some other things. So stay tuned. Check back for that. Thanks.